Welcome back to AgriTalk at World Pork Expo in Des Moines. Day number two, off to a stormy start, but uh, looks like the rain has let up and it's much cooler, which is some nice relief from the heat and humidity of yesterday. But a good opening day yesterday. It looks like another good day uh, attendance-wise here uh, at the World Pork Expo today, and it wraps up, of course, uh, tomorrow. Well, yesterday we talked with Doug Wolf, president of the National Pork Producers Council, and he told us he'd be having uh, some meetings concerning trade with uh, the South Korea ambassador and also uh, uh, government officials uh, here in Iowa. And Doug Wolf joins us again today to give us an update. Uh, thanks for coming back, and tell us how did the meeting go? Well, thanks a lot, Mike. Uh, yeah, we had a real good meeting. Uh, we met with uh, the Korean uh, ambassador and his entourage, and we met with uh, Representative King and uh, had real good open discussion. Uh, the ambassador explained where they're at and how soon they need a decision and uh, basically laid down a the line that they're, they're going to need a decision by August uh, in order to get it to pass in Korea. And uh, Representative King seemed to think that that could be done. He, he didn't feel any reason not to. And then, of course, we uh, met with uh, the governor, and uh, he showed his support and said he would do everything he could get it done. So I felt we had a real good uh, meetings. And uh, today, the ambassador is going to be here uh, speaking at our luncheon. So I'd like to have everybody come to that. Is he expressing any frustration that it's taking so long to get a vote on it here in the United States? Well, I'm not certain he's frustrated any more than we are. Uh, he, of course, he's a frustration. It's been a long time, and they felt they've done a good deal. They uh, renegotiated, and they're kind of wondering what's what's holding up the process. But uh, to tell you the truth, uh, we we were on the same side of it. Uh, Sam Carney and I were there, and and I know from the National Pork Producer Council side, we're about as frustrated as that. But we're we're sure hoping we got it on the move now. So August, we'd heard earlier that maybe July was the deadline. So now he's saying August, if, if it can be passed in this country by then, then they can take care of things on their end? Well, he pretty much said that that was going to be a, a deadline. Now, yeah, I don't know how politics play on either side of it. But, uh, yeah, we were hoping July. But uh, you got to remember today we're already pushing the middle of June. In order to get something by July, I think it's going to be tough. But uh, if we can get it by the, by the fall recess, we think we're going to be in good shape. Of course, meanwhile, they're moving ahead with trade deals with other countries. Absolutely. They told us that yesterday that uh, I believe Korea is signing an agreement with the EU that's going to start uh, in July. And uh, he said basically the time is t uh, clock is ticking, and if we don't get our agreement signed, uh, we're going to lose market share. What are you hearing and the feeling you get that if it get, get, finally gets to Congress for a vote, will there be the votes to pass it? It seems like it. Uh, from what little wor or work we've done out on the Hill with our staff, uh, counting votes, it looks pretty good. And uh, uh, Congressman King said that uh, when he gets back uh, to D.C. that he was going to ask the whip to do a count. And uh, he thought if they could come up with the number they needed that they would go ahead and push to get it approved. What does the South Korea trade agreement mean for the pork industry? What's at stake here? Well, uh, thanks. That's a, that's a great deal. Um, First of all, uh, the U.S. Uh, pork industry exported uh, about $4.8 billion last year in pork products. So exports are very huge to us, average about $56 a pig. If Korea, we can get that cream, and, and, and of course we were asking for the Colombia and Panama also. Uh, if we can get all three of those implemented, uh, and it's going to take a little time to get them fully implemented, but uh, we figured it'd add over 770 million more dollars to the export markets, uh, over uh, close to $12 a pig, and in, and on top of that, it's going to add 10,000 new pork industry jobs. So there's a lot at stake here, and as we've talked before, with these free trade agreements, especially with Korea, it's not only what you can gain, which you just point out, but what you don't lose. Uh, because right now, as they move to other countries and free those free trade agreements, we run the risk of losing market share that we already have. Yeah, that's that's the thing that uh, people got to understand that we we have access now. We're the number one exporter. We're, we've got good access, but we can't compete against zero tariff. And these company or countries are moving forward. Uh, I know Colombia is moving forward with Canada. And they're, they're signing agreements, and uh, according to Dr. Dermot Hayes, that uh, either we move ahead or within 10 years we'll lose our complete access to these markets. Real quick, any late development on the Mexican truck uh, situation? 
Well, we're, I don't know that there's anything late on that. It's still moving forward. Uh, last I heard, the Department of Transportation is writing up the regulations to make it go. Uh, we need to get that passed. Uh, uh, there's just a lot of dollars involved in that, and uh, we're, we're hoping that just moves forward. Because it has impacted, certainly, the pork industry. Tell you what, we need to take a break here, and uh, we're talking with Doug Wolf, president of the National Pork Producers Council. So, Doug, uh, I guess you can report, uh, hopefully, some optimism from uh, South Korea towards the free trade agreement. Now, if we can just get Congress to vote on it. Right? Yeah, I think everything's uh, lining up real good, Mike, and uh, we just got to hopefully we can get it passed. By that August deadline. All right, we'll take a break. Back with more from here at World Pork Expo in Des Moines at the Iowa State Fairgrounds. Stay with us. This is AgriTalk.